Mr. Jackson. Hey, Mr. J. I've got some good news for you, Jenkins. The board approved the weekend trailer visits. They did? They did. Oh, Mr. J, that's great. Thank you. Boomer was so excited to hear the good news that she ran over and hugged Mr. Jackson. Whoa. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mr. J. It's all right, Boomer. I gotta go call Gavin and tell him the great news. That was so nice of you to get those weekend visits approved. It'll be good for a lot of the women. I was happy to help. You really are the best, Mr. J. That was really nice of you, the way you helped Vera. Oh, it was nothing. No, it was something. You didn't have to clean her up, but you did. Thank you. No worries. Do you have kids, Lou? <laughs> kids? Fuck no. I never wanted to be a mum. Fair enough. Not every woman's meant to be a mother. <laughs> Mothers. <laughs> Who needs them anyway? Parents in general. After everything I've seen, they do more harm than good. Do you really believe that? Absolutely. I take it you didn't have the best relationship with your parents. Good guess. My mother, she had no business having kids. She never showed me or my brother any kind of love. My father was an abusive piece of shit. He used to be a cop, you know. <laughs> a cop. They're supposed to protect and serve. All he ever protected were his bottles of alcohol. All he ever served was himself. Do you ever speak to them? Nah. My mother lost her mind when I was about 10 years old. I'll never forget that day. It was 3.38 in the morning when I heard the screaming and banging. My brother and I ran out to see what was happening. That's when we saw her. She was bashing her head against the wall over and over again. There was so much blood. Travis, he, uh, he started yelling at her to stop. She didn't. My father was at work. It was just the three of us there. I didn't know what to do. Travis ran to the phone and called 911. He told the operator to call my dad. By the time he got home, my mother had stopped her shit. She just collapsed on the floor, whimpering. Trev and I sat on the floor next to her. But she wouldn't stop crying. My dad yelled at us to get away from her. He picked her up and carried her out of the house and into an ambulance. And we never saw her again. Oh, Lou, I'm so sorry. She said she didn't want to be a mom. She told my dad she didn't want to be our mother anymore. Nothing was the same after that. My father turned to drinking to help ease his pain. He was a mean old drunk. One night, while I was sleeping, he came into my room. He woke me up in a way a father should never wake his daughter. Bridget moved closer to Lou and put her arm around her. I started screaming and telling him to stop, but he wouldn't stop. And when he was done, he told me I could tell whoever I wanted, but it wouldn't matter. No one would take my word over the word of a cop. By the time I was 13, I had had enough. And one day, I got my revenge. His fingers. That's what he liked to use. That night, he came into my room. I was ready for him. I went to bed that night with a brick under my blanket. The second I felt him get on my bed, I pulled it out and hit him over the head with it. I tied him up and waited for him to wake up. And when he did, I looked him in the eyes and let him know I was never going to let him hurt me again. I cut his fingers off. All ten of them. I can still hear his screams. I can still smell the blood. My brother heard my father screaming and called the cops. They took me to Mockridge. It's a juvenile detention center. Yeah, I know. I worked there before Irina set me up. I've been in and out of the system ever since. Lou and Bridget looked at each other. Bridget's eyes filled with sympathy, and Lou's eyes filled with pain. Bridget leaned in and hugged Lou as tight as she could. No child should have to go through what Lou went through. After a few moments, Lou pulled away. You should go. Bridget didn't want to leave her. Instead of leaving, she put her hands on Lou's cheek, and then she kissed her. Their lips pressed together softly, 
It was a quick little kiss, but it was enough for both of them to know they'd never kiss each other again. I'm sorry. I don't know why I did that. It's okay. It was nice. I just... Fuck. It's Michelle, isn't it? You love her, even after all that's happened. I do. I hate that I still love her after what she did. I know what you mean. I'm still so in love with Frankie. I think we both have some soul searching to do. I reckon you're right. Thank you, Bridget. For what? For all of it. You're one hell of a lady. Frankie's a lucky woman. You're pretty great yourself. Go on. Go get your girl. Out in the halls, Michelle and Irina were making their way towards H1. Alright girl, this is it. You're gonna go into that unit and tell Nancy exactly how you feel about her. Be honest with the bitch, alright? Don't hold back. What if she doesn't want to speak to me? Get the fuck out of here with all that. What she wants doesn't matter. Listen to me. If you think positive thoughts, positive things will happen. Now go in there and get your woman. Irina slowly inched her way into H1. What the fuck do you want? I want to speak to Nancy. What makes you think she wants to speak to you? How would you know what Nancy wants? What's going on out here? Irina, what are you doing here? Nancy, you are out of the wheelchair? That is wonderful. What the fuck do you want? I need to speak to you. I have nothing to say to you. That is okay. You do not need to say anything. All you have to do is listen. Please, come walk with me, Nancy. Just hear me out. Nancy looked down at Ali. Ali did not look pleased. Whatever you have to say to me, you can say it in front of Ali. Very well, then. I was a fool for letting you go. I do not know what I was thinking. I let Mila get into my head. She convinced me that you were no good for me, but she was wrong. I was wrong. You are my everything, Nancy. When I wake up in the morning, you are the first thing I think about. When I go to bed at night and close my eyes, all I see is you. I am not sure of much these days, but I am certain that I love you. And if you give us another chance, I will spend the rest of my life making you happy. Nancy looked at Irina with tears in her eyes. Do you mean it, Irina? What the fuck are you saying, Nancy? I'm so sorry, Ellie, but I love her. And what about me? I thought you really cared about me. I do care about you, Ali. I just... I thought there was no way Irina would ever forgive me. I thought she hated me. Fuck you, Nancy. I should have known better. You're just a selfish whore. Don't you talk to her like that. Fuck you too, Irina. Get the fuck out of my unit and take your whore with you. Irina looked at Ali and gave her a smug look. She held her hand out towards Nancy and said, Let's go, my love. We have some catching up to do. Nancy felt terrible for hurting Ali, but she had to follow her heart. She grabbed Irina's hand and together they walked out of H1, leaving Ali behind. Oh, my sweet Ali. I would have given anything to be able to hold her in that moment. Mr. J, I just heard what happened. Is it true that the doctor freak killed was Mila's dad? Yeah. He was also Ferguson's brother. Whoa. Where's the freak now? She's down in the slot. I gotta go down there and talk to her. What for? She might know the truth about how her sister set Bridget up. That's a long shot, Frankie. And even if Ferguson knows, there's no way she's going to tell you the truth. Look, Mr. J, I have been busting my ass trying to find a paper trail, and there is none. I don't know what else to do. It's worth a shot. I guess it won't hurt to try. Good luck, Frankie. Frankie rushed down to the slot. She opened Joan's cell door. Joan sat staring at the wall and without ever once looking towards Frankie, she said, Francesca, never thought you'd be coming to visit me. Ditto. Well, I heard what happened yesterday. Good news travels fast. 
How could you kill your own brother? He was no brother of mine. But to answer your question, some people deserve to die. What about Sasha or your mother? Did they deserve to die? Joan looked at Frankie with disgust. Why are you here? I'm here because I need your help. Bridget is a good person. She does not deserve to be in here. She is a danger to society. She's exactly where she belongs. Like hell she is. Your sister set her up and you know it. I am begging you. Please, tell me what you know. Now why would I do that? Because it's the right thing to do. All you've ever done is destroy people's lives. Don't you want to do something good for once in your life? Joan's face softened as Frankie's words echoed in her head. She used to be good. She used to be kind. And then one day, she changed. She'd been hurt and she wanted everyone to hurt the same way she did. She made them all pay. Everyone who ever crossed her paid the price. Frankie continued talking, but Joan didn't hear a word she was saying. Bridget was innocent. The only reason Sasha set her up was to try to help Irina and Mila. And the whole time, Mila was keeping secret the fact that Dimitri was in her life. Suddenly, Joan's blood began to boil. Sasha hated Dimitri. Joan remembered how devastated Mila was after she killed him. It was like a light bulb went off in Joan's head. Dimitri killed their mother because he wanted to be head of the Malenkovich family. And Mila killed Sasha. She was convinced of it. It all made sense now. They wanted the family fortune and power for themselves. Joan looked up at Frankie. I'll help you. I'll tell you everything I know. Frankie took out her mobile and pressed record and Joan did as she said she would. She told her everything, names, dates, and more importantly, she told her where she could find the paper trail Sasha kept that would prove Bridget was innocent. Frankie walked out of the slot feeling like the weight of the world had been taken off of her shoulders. She was going to go straight to the police and play the recording for them, but first, she had to find Bridget and tell her the good news. Mila was laying in her cell, counting the swipe cards Elsie gave her. There were so many. She put two of them in her socks and the rest of them in her pocket. In her cell, she would stay until she heard the signal. How are you feeling, Gorsen? How did you feel when your mother was killed? Irina felt her skin get hot at the mention of her mother's murder. It wasn't so much what Mila said, but how she said it. When we were in medical... You cried out and said they were all dead. Your parents, grandmother, but you did not mention my mama. She was your aunt, Mila. Do you not care that she has gone too? Aunt Sasha hated me and you know it. She was always comparing me to you and reminding me that I was a Dragovich, as if that made me any less of a Malenkovich. How do you think that made me feel? My mama loved you, Mila. She did not have to raise you as her own, but she did. Because Grandma Nadia made her do it. Grandma loved me, but your mother never did. She was an evil bitch, just like you. I will let that slide because I know you are grieving. But if you ever speak about my mother like that again, what, huh? What are you going to do? You will do nothing or you'll end up just like Aunt Sasha. What did you say? You heard me. Now get the fuck out of my cell. Suka Riyad. Mila pushed Irina out of her cell and closed the door. Irina stood on the other side of the door, shaking with anger. What did Mila mean she'd end up just like Aunt Sasha? Irina needed to speak with the only family she had left. Her Auntie Joan. I've got Jenkins here to see you. Thanks, Miss Miles. You look happy. I am, Booms. Sit down. So what's got you all smiles? I got some great news today. 
Well, are you going to tell me or what? Not yet. I got to tell Bridget first, but you'll hear about it soon. That's not why I called you in here, though. Buma, Artie and Sophie went in front of a judge and spoke on your behalf. They said they hold no ill will towards you for what you did, and that they're grateful to you for allowing Lizzie not to suffer. I filed all the paperwork and submitted it to the judge. He reviewed everything and made a decision on your final sentence. Buma, he dropped the murder charge. What the fuck did you just say? He dropped the murder charge, and he reduced what's left of your sentence. Buma, you're going to be out of this place in a couple of months. Do you know what this means? Fuck, Frankie. I'm getting out of here? Yes, you are getting out of here. And you'll be able to give birth to three women with Gavin by your side. Come here, you big lug. Frankie gave Boomer a big hug and they both cried tears of joy. Boomer was going to get a chance to live a happy life with her man and her baby. I gotta call Gavin and tell him the great news. Thank you so much, Frankie. Ah, oh, I love you to bits. I love you too, Booms. Irina rushed through the halls looking for Mr. Jackson. She had to talk to Ferguson as soon as possible. Mr. Jackson! Mr. Jackson, thank God, I need your help. What's wrong, Irina? Is it Mila? No, it's me. I need to speak with John Ferguson. She's in the slot, Irina. You won't be able to speak with her until she gets out. When will that be? A month. No, Mr. Jackson. It is an emergency. I have to speak with Aunt Joan now. Please. It is a matter of life and death. I'm sorry, Irina. There's nothing I can do. Bliad! Elsie looked at her watch. Any minute now, the entire prison would be taken over by the women. She hurried to her desk, grabbed her belongings, and made her way out of the prison. Paula and the rest of the psychic mates sat in the rec room watching TV. Finish those snacks, ladies. Final count is in 20 minutes. Paula got up and walked past the women towards the trash bin, tossing a swipe card to each of the women as she passed by them. When she was done, she sat back down and looked at one of the women and whispered, Hey, sissy, you ready? Hell yeah, I'm ready. You fucking slag. You ate my chips. Fuck you. Your mother's the slag. Sissy got up and rammed Paula into the wall and they began fighting. The women went wild, cheering on the fight. The guard assigned to them came running in. And the moment he tried to break up the fight, Paula jumped on his back. She grabbed him by the hair and pushed his head to the side. Then she bit him right on the jugular. She spit out a chunk of his flesh and then she jumped off of his back. The guard grabbed his neck and caught him. Bitch right before falling to the ground. Paula grabbed his walkie-talkie and made her way to the gates. She used her swipe card to get out of the rec room. The rest of the psych inmates followed her. They were met by three more guards. One of the guards pepper sprayed the women, but these bitches were crazy as fuck, unfazed by the burning. Sissy ran towards one of the guards and headbutted him. She grabbed his baton and hit him across the face with it. The women rushed towards the rest of the guards. One of them saw the women coming and ran away, but the rest of them weren't so lucky. The women beat the guards and stole their batons, swipe cards, and their keys. Come on, ladies. We gotta get the fuck out of here. Now! One by one, the women ran out of the sight unit. Paula took one last look at the bloody guards and smirked. On her way out, she pressed the panic button. Over in each nine, Mila heard the panic button. She knew that was the signal. She ran out of her cell as fast as she could. She was headed towards the chemicals cupboard to get the guns Elsie left for her. Attention compound, attention compound. Everyone report back to your units immediately. This is a lockdown. I repeat, this is a lockdown. Mila saw some of the women headed back to their units and pulled out the extra swipe cards. She looked at one of the women and said, Here, take these. The woman looked at the swipe cards. It took her a second to realize what they were. 
Oh shit! They're swipe cards! Mila arrived at the chemicals cupboard. She grabbed the bottles of bleach and threw them to the side. The guns were there, just like Elsa said they would be. She grabbed one of the guns and stashed it in her sock. She put the other one in her waistband and ran back out to the walls. She was headed straight to H1 to find Rita. What the fuck is going on out there? I don't know, but it can't be nothing good. The H1 girls heard women cheering in the distance. The sound was getting closer and closer. Do you hear that? Is that the women? Oh shit. What is it, Miss Bennett? It's a riot. The women are rioting. Just as Vera said that, the screaming psych inmates started running past H1. One of them stopped at their unit and said, Oi, top dog, think fast. The inmate flung one of the swipe cards and a set of the officer's keys through the cell bars. Bridget caught them before they hit the ground. Is that what I think it is? It's a swipe card. Are those keys? Yeah. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's get the fuck out of here. No, we can't go out there. Someone could get hurt. Ali's right. We have to stay put until the situation's resolved. What? We're sitting ducks in here. You can't risk something happening to the baby, Boomer. I can take care of myself, you know. I'd never let anything happen to my baby. We know that, Boomer, but there's no telling what the women are doing out there. Rita and Ali are right. You all have to stay put. And what about you? I have to go find Frankie. I'm going with you. Well, you all can stay here if you want, but I'm going with Bridget. Gotta go find your girlfriend, huh? Nancy just looked at Ali. She didn't bother answering. Bridget took the keys and her, Nancy, and Vera walked out of H1. Bridget then locked the gate. Rita, here. Take the keys just in case you guys have to make a run for it. Sierra 3, this is Sierra 1. The psych patients have gotten loose. They're rioting. What is your location? There was no answer on the walkie-talkie. Fuck. Mr. J. Frankie, are you okay? I'm fine. What the fuck is going on? The side prisoners got loose. They're rioting. Without saying a word, Frankie took off running towards H1. Will did the same. Will and Frankie arrived at H1. Rita, thank God you're okay. I'm fine. We're all fine. Where's Bridget? She took off with Miss Benny. She was going to look for you. Frankie took off, heading towards her office. What should we do, Mr. J? You can't stay in here. We'll open the gate and let the women out. Follow me. Out of the halls, the psych inmates were letting the women out of their units. The women ran out yelling and shouting. One of them stood behind, setting fires to the mattresses and furniture in the units. In the toilets, one of the women was clogging every single toilet with socks and then flushing them. One by one, the toilets began to flood. When she was done, she clogged the sinks and let the water out. Before she knew it, the entire bathroom was filled. She ran out and put a trash bin by the door to hold it open. Water spilled out and onto the floor floors. The inmate ran to go start some more floods in one of the other bathrooms when all of a sudden, something hit her on the shoulder. She fell to the floor like a stack of bricks. Where the f fuck do you think you're going? Fuck you, Miss Miles. The inmate kicked Linda in the kneecap. The force of the kick dislocated her knee. She dropped her baton and screamed out in pain. The inmate snatched Linda's baton and bashed her her already wounded knee. The inmate grabbed Linda's tie and started dragging her through the shitty water. And then she saw some of her friends. Oi, come quick. Help me tie this bitch up. The women are rioting. You need to call in the riot police immediately. Just then, Erica's office door swung open. Erica turned to see who it was. Don't hurt me, please. I'm not gonna hurt you, Governor. I came here to help. The woman closed the door behind her. The women have gone mad. It's not safe out there. The inmate inched towards Erica with a sick look in her eye. And Erica found herself backing away from her the closer she got. What are you doing? Don't come any closer. The inmate pulled out a shave. What the fuck? You said you came here to help me. Oh, I am going to help you. By putting you out of your fucking misery. Before Erica could say a word, the woman punched her in the face. 
She grabbed Erica's wrists and cut them open with her shave. The woman ran out of her office and left Erica on the floor to bleed out. Help me! Somebody help me! 